Hey guys, Trusser here. Now, one thing that I absolutely like about Enlisted is the occasional events that come along. Now, some of these events are actually quite awesome. For example, well, actually I won't spoil it because this is going to be ranking the events from worst to best. Now, I'll be using pretty much anything to... Uh, I'll basically be um, judging these events based on what they added, more or less what they've done to the game since, and more or less just how fun they were like some of these events were actually kind of fun some of these were just miserable and some of these were just forgettable anyways i'm gonna start with what i think was the worst event and if you've been on my channel you probably know it's gonna be sandstorm oh i bet you weren't expecting this yeah i generally wasn't expecting this when i was writing up every event and said you know which event you know, it was the worst. Sandstorm was going to be, was, in my opinion, going to be number one. But, unfortunately, I had to look back at it. And I'm going to have to say that the Bayonet event has to be at number one. Because, for a start, it was only good on two campaigns. So, that meant half the player base basically didn't get anything from these events. Now, I will say it was a neat event. It was a neat event. And I did enjoy it. But it's not, it wasn't a good event. Like... Yeah, it was neat getting, you know, new, your weapons. So it was more or less for older players, actually. This event was more or less for older players to try and get some bayonets for their weapons. But the problem was that weapon, like, and I will say for Moscow, it worked. Okay, for Moscow, it worked. You got a lot of bayonets for your bolt actions. But for, and and especially, and even for Axis Normandy, you, it worked as well. Because you got a lot of bolt actions. Um... Because I've, I've still got a lot of bayonets for both of them. But for Allies Normandy, it really didn't... It flopped big time. Because you... I I actually got every... I did everything for this event. And I still have M2 carbines and M1 car and M1 Garands without bayonets. Because they were just so scarce. I actually have some rarity weapons actually now. I actually have rarity weapons because I just don't, which I'm probably never going to use because, let's face it, the Grand, I mean, the Grand's great. Don't get me wrong, I love the Grand, but the problem is, is that a Grand with a bayonet and an M2 with a bayonet is are just incredible weapons, especially compared to other, you know, they're really good for close range combat, which I think is just the great thing about them. But, unfortunately, they ha it just had to come in at number one as the worst of the worst. Anyways, let's now move on to the next event. Shocker here, Sandstorm is 100%. You knew this was going to be so long on the list. Sandstorm was hated back when it was launched, and it was hated, still hated now. Was there any rewards for Sandstorm? I generally cannot remember what rewards Sandstorm offered. Because it was too early for the um character for the profile customization, which was in fact started with Steel Fortress of all things, but it wasn't that good. And I think that you know the, these events were just pointless and still are. And I don't know why that they keep doing these events. That no one likes them and no one plays them. Anyways, let's move on to the next event. Hey, look, what do you know? It's another one of these events again. Only difference between this one and Sandstorm is that this one actually has a, a reward. Other than that, it was unbalanced as fuck on launch. Like, these events are already quite unbalanced, but this one was definitely by far the most unbalanced. The fact was that Medic Cars' butchered progression on this to the point where people got insanely high just from boosting with the medic squads. Add on top that Stalingrad is just a shit fest as is. So you've got a shit fest campaign and boosters, boosters galore. It basically meant that legitimate players had no chance of getting anything in this campaign during this award. With Sandstorm and Steel Fortress, you had a chance. But due to the shit fest that is Stalingrad, yeah, no chance. Easy bottom, you know, quite low on the list. If I would actually say this was 
mechanically worse than Sandstorm, but at least with this one, you could get some rewards out of it, unlike Sandstorm. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, this kind of shows how bad these events are. That the fact is that this is the best one of the three, and probably is considered the best one of the three, and yet it's still in the bottom five. In fact, in my original draft, this was this was actually, you know, these three were the bottom three. However, the um, <clears throat> it, it's, it, this one is definitely by far the best of the f of the three. The only reason being is that this one doesn't have any abuse and it gives like not a step back, and unlike Sandstorm, it actually gives you some rewards. It actually gave some rewards. That being said, it was still shit and hundred percent was not worth the awards was not worth the event slot that it took up. Now this was actually kind of interesting because I'm actually quite mixed on modern conflict. On the one hand it was it was an okay event in terms of just mechanics wise. Like it was okay. It wasn't the best but it was okay. Meanwhile if you're looking at some of the other events as well, I mean, it didn't give the customization like like Steel Fortress and Not Step Back did, but it wasn't there to do that. It was just there to have some fun and experiment. So, hey, it was alright, I guess. Hands up who actually remembers this event. Honestly, all of the other events prior to the back, other than the Bayonet, were all like though they were all those um, event page events, which you know. They were just, you know, everyone ignores them, really. But this one was actually kind of a, you know, you had to do this event if you wanted some, like, it gave you some unique styling guide customization, but really, who remembers this event? This event was almost immediately overshadowed by another one, and yeah, not really much to say about this other than it was just customization. But hey, I mean, it's not as bad, at least it wasn't a bunch of unfinished crap, unlike other events, but hey-ho, still pretty bad. I mean, I just, I generally can't say anything about it. It was so forgettable. I, I, and it was completely overshadowed by another event. Okay, this, this event was just fun, okay? This event was just fun. All it was, was, it was basically just a, basically you're on drugs for the entire game. And it was fun. Okay, I'll just say it was a fun. It was fun, but again, like Modern Conflict, there really wasn't much substance to it. And I will say though, it was a lot of fun just flying around shit. And at least it gave some silver orders, which Modern Conflict also gave. But I mean, there's not really much to say about this one. It was fun, but it wasn't the biggest. You know, it wasn't the biggest game changer, like like other game, like other events, which I could mention. Oh boy, this event! I made a video on this event a while back, saying that this was a terrible event, and half the comments exploded with me say, with people saying, "Oh, why the fuck are you complaining? This is literally free stuff." And the reason I was complaining was because. The event, for the be for lack of a better term, was a bit shit. And honestly, stacking it up, it's still in the bottom half of events. I would still say it's still in the bottom half of events. And really, I'm going to explain it a little bit later, but they should have added a lot more new, new interesting stuff to this event. Maybe add in some Chinese weapons, some unique Chinese weapons in... Moscow, for example, or give, or, you know, a unique squad or something like that. I don't know, like, something. Other than just, you know, oh, complete 10 battles, you get some silver orders and a poster. Really, and it wasn't even a good poster. Like, who the fuck cares about posters in this game? I have, like, 10 of them. I don't use them at all. And if it literally, I just can just recycle what was said about the after the last one because this was almost the exact same. You do wins and you get boosters. 
you get silver order. The only real difference was that you actually got a 300% booster from this, which I would say this outshines the poster. And the thing was, at least this one was like, you got a kit, you know, you did it multiple times over the week. So you do the events over the week. They were quite short events, and then you get the booster. Whereas with the, um, <laughs> with the other one, it was literally, you only got one silver order, whereas this one got more. So, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm still not saying this was a good event. We're still not even got to the good events yet. <laughs> Ironic. But at least it's getting a step in the right direction, more or less, from those useless events. The jump off between Elba Day and Engineer Day was insane. And the fact is that Engineer's Day came before Elba Day is also insane to me. Now, in terms of events, Engineer's Day doesn't really look like it gives as much as Elba Day. I mean, you get a booster, some weapons, some troops... And you got a unique, some, but the thing was, you got the unique hammers, which was the coolest part. And also, what was also cool about it was that you basically built, so you got, um, there was three, there was eight tasks, you had six, <clears throat> and you had to do three a day, basically. So you had nine tasks and out of a possible eight. But what made this really interesting was that the fact was that all of the tasks, unlike every other event where you you did one task you know and then you did the next one they did the next one this one you did all of the tasks at the same time so you could really stack these tasks together for example on the fifth day on the on the second one the fifth and the sixth you got a kills if you built if you got kills with engineer built buildings like machine gun nests ca um, at cannons and anti-aircraft guns and you had got kills and you did it while you're playing as an engineer you could literally stack them together. As well as that, the, the only... As well as that, you know, the mobile spawn point being used 10 times, stacked with engineer points. Ammo boxes as well, stacked with engineer points. It was just... It was a good event. And also, you got some... You got a good reward with the hammers. You see what I mean here? You get an interesting reward. And the events as well, the, the battles, they're actually challenges. So you feel like you've actually earned something and not... Oh, just kill 100 people for one silver order weapon or something like that. Whatever the hell it was for um, Luna. Whatever the fuck it was. And honestly, I will say, hand on heart, this was probably, this is the first good event. And I will say that to the, to, I will carry that quite high. And you know what's funny? This is number six on the list. So I did actually just did a count. This is number six on the list. And it's gotten up to the top, you know, top five. Just outside the top five events. Before I say this was an actual worthwhile event. Fuck me. These events sometimes drive me insane. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's cover this one while it's still fresh in our memory. It's Victory in Europe. And honestly, it was a good event, I would say. But it was really poorly communicated. If it was better communicated, maybe it would have found its way potentially to number three. I would say potentially number three. But that poor communication with the whole Gold Order situation was, in my opinion, just a bit of a hassle for the um, for the event. If you don't know, there was originally it was it was believed that you'd get the Gold Order after completing eight of the tasks, eight of the ten days. But it turns out that was a communication error, and instead it was 10 days. And I will say, though, you did get some pretty good weapons. You did get some pretty cool unlocks. Not just the silvers, but you also got the really... You got cold steel and either the PPS or multiple cold steels. Now, that was the, the great thing about this, this event, in my opinion, was the versatility. If you don't like the um, Axis or you don't... The Allies event and you don't use... Allied Soviets, you could skip the red PPS and go off for five cold steel weapons. And that is insane. I obviously went for the red PPS and, of course, one of the um, the Normandy Axis cold steel weapon. If you saw my last video, you'll see that. And I did get the gold order, but you can see with some of the tasks, like, kills, you know, obviously these, these were easy enough tasks to do, but the problem was it was just really strict in in holding it they really should have done it so that 
the gold order was eight days instead of ten. That was what really handled it because most people were looking forward to getting another gold order. But yeah, it, it kind of got stifled by the um, by that by that. Anyways, let's move on to the next event. What do you know? The first ever event came in at number four. Now, the real problem with D-Day is was just how small it was. It wasn't like most people say, oh, it was very strict. But honestly, it wasn't as strict as people remember it nowadays. Like, I remember back in the day, people, you know, this people were cramming out these things. I did it all in a day, so. And I think this was a decent event, actually. Was it the best event? No. It wasn't even close. It's not even top three, actually. But what I think about this event was... It was the first one, so they were testing it. And also, they did it... They really did hit the ground running. With some pretty good... Some pretty good unlocks. I mean... You got a lot of silver orders, which, remember, back then they were actually quite scarce. So this was a lot better. But you also got a unique soldier for, for Allies Normandy, which... I mean, that's fair enough if you don't play Allies Normandy. You can see how that's a bad thing. But the final thing, being a gold weapon order, was insanely good. And in my opinion, just made it... Pretty much made the event. I, I generally can't say anything more about it because it was just all pretty good. That being said, though, I will... I would have to say that for a first time event, this was actually one of the best. And honestly, I think they could have improved a lot. And they did improve a lot with their next event. Anyways, let's move on to number three. This is another event I guarantee most people would not have actually hurt remember. But honestly, this this was actually a pretty good event. Now, you might be looking at it and going, but it's only two rewards. Yeah, it's only two rewards. But the thing is, these are two great rewards. And you had a really good time frame for it. So you really didn't have much pressure for it. I mean, completing one battle and winning two were, is piss easy. And you did these out of order. So you basically could do this in two... You could do the whole event in two day, in two games. Now, you might be thinking, but that doesn't really sound like much. But the thing was, you know, a gold order for weapons and troops is still insane. I still... I'm pretty sure I still got that gold. Actually, no, I don't know. I would have done the other one. Oh, well. But yeah, this is still a pretty good event. And in my opinion, this was, you know, it it's a small event, but it was a good event. And I know many people be like, but you rated events, you know, which had best, you know, more rewards, less. The difference is these, these, this event had less rewards, but these rewards were bigger, basically had a bigger quantity then. Like, silver orders, you can get silver orders anywhere. Gold orders are very rare. Like, you can only get them in two ways, other than events. Other than events, you only get them in two ways. Which is from, be you know, which is from boxes and by doing the battle pass. And with the boxes, it's only one once every 15 days, and you have a 1 in 6 chance. And it's like, even then, it's like a 1 in 2. And then you get to a 33% chance or something like that. It's, it's weird. But, and with the, um... With the battle pass, not everyone does the battle pass, so yeah. Uh, so it's kind of accepting that this is a, I mean, it's a pretty good event, and it's, you know, it's a good small event, really. Anyways, let's move on to number two. Everyone knew coming into this into this video that this event was going to be at least in the top half of this video. Like, it's battle summer, like. What can you say about Battle Summer? Like, there was nothing really... There was not much bad about it. I mean, the only real problem was it was a bit strict in times when it comes to a few of the days, especially some of the later days. Like, the earlier days were pretty good, but especially the later days, it kind of got a bit over the top when it came to how much they were demanding from the days. And But the rewards were pretty good. I mean, Silver Orders, Cold Steel Weapons, you know, the unique... The, the Fokker Wolf and the Rhino, and then the Battle Summer Squad as well, which was, I don't, and it was diverse as well. Like, obviously, the Cold Steel, you could use them in any campaign. The Fokker Wolf is in Moscow, obviously, for the Axis. 
the Stuart was in Normandy, and the Battle Summer Squad obviously being in Berlin, which was good because Berlin had just been released around the time of Battle Summer. So, yeah, not really, it was a great event. The only real downside was how strict some of the later days were, but even then, that wasn't too bad. It was a bit, you know, it's a bit of a hassle, but it wasn't like, say, oh, you know, it wasn't like, say, some other events where you had to do, like, a billion tasks in a day, and you got a lot of stuff out of it. This was, for, for a long time, this was the gold standard of tasks. And this was the second event as well. Like, the event prior to this was D-Day. And they really hit the nail on the head with Battle Summer. But it wasn't the but it wasn't the best event. It's not been the best event. So, what is the best? Well, I'm pretty sure everyone knows what that event is. If and let's move on to that event. You really had to act like you didn't see Fiery November coming in at number one. Like this took everything that Battle Summer did right and improved on it. It and it and it took everything that Battle Summer did wrong. And removed it. So let's start with the task, right? So there was about 20 or so tasks now. Now with Battle Summer, the main problem was that the tasks were a bit strict in days. And it was really, you know... Obviously, of course, you can miss tasks out and still, you know, complete all of it. You can miss days out and complete all of it. But it was kind of, like, really heavily balanced towards the later days. With Fire in November, it was kind of scattered out. Yeah, there was a few later days had more tasks than earlier days. But even then, the earlier day ones were pretty quick. And even the, and even some of the later day tasks were also pretty quick. Like, you know, kill, kill 35 people were in a tank. You know, free wins. Shoot down a four planes, for example. 50 kills with a submachine gun. You know, or... You know, those are all pretty quick stuff. And they gave some pretty good weapon. They, they gave some pretty good rewards. The first thing was the Silver Orders. Now, the main thing was with... The main complaint with Battle Summer was once you complete all the tasks, there was no reason to do it. So if... Let's say you completed the um, the first three days tasks. You literally... All you needed to do was just either do battle victories in Normandy or you get SMG kills. Both of which are pretty easy to do, by the way. And you were done with the, you were done with the event. You literally could ignore the, the event for the rest of the week. With Fire in November, they made it so that you you had a bit of an incentive to do the event other because it was after it because quite a bit because you'd get silver orders and you know back then back in these days you know silver orders weren't the easiest to get. You also got cold steel, you know, two cold steel weapons, which is pretty good. You got a unique, you know, you got some unique soldiers, you, you know, you got the unique um, Axis Tunisia soldier, which makes sense because this came out around Tunisia. You also got, of course, the P, um, the P-47 again. You also got the unique Jagdpanzer IV, which was pretty, which was pretty cool, to be honest. And, of course, the Fire in November squad in Tunisia with the uh, Charlton rifle, which was pretty cool. We, you know, the, the, the car's pretty cool, so, yeah. Really, there wasn't much bad about it. The only thing which which this could have added, which would have been better, is if there was, like, some, you know, for, like, 17 tasks, you got a gold order. I reckon that's how they could have made this, top, this even better. Other than that, it was still a very good event. And, in my opinion, worth it in the long run. Anyways, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Leave your thoughts about... Just about these events in the comments. What was your guys' favourite event? What do you guys think was the best? Which guys do you think was the worst? And I'll see you guys in the next video.